I hope you and your family are doing well, and I hope you're managing through this challenging time. I know it's tough. I'm coming to you from my home. I've been here for about three weeks. Our entire service autopilot team is working from home, and I want you to know that we're not viewing this as a vacation. We are hard at work on supporting you and making Service Autopilot as a company better and making Service Autopilot the product better. So our teams are working diligently from their home trying to support you. And I'll tell you, I appreciate your patience because I know uh, we're not able to react as quickly and it's been interesting. As I can ima I imagine you can empathize with everything going on inside your organization. We've also been working on version three and we've been working on it, as you know, forever. And release two of version three is ready to go. And so we will be releasing that to you very shortly. And that's the reason for this video. One, I want to let you know we're working really hard for you. Uh, we're working diligently as a team every single day. And we want to tell you about release two of version three. Hey, everyone. It's Chris at Service Autopilot. And I'm here to show you the second iteration of version three of Service Autopilot. Now, we showed you a lot of the patterns that you'll continue to see throughout version three in our first release of this year and you'll see those patterns continue here. So let's go ahead and dive into the software and take a look at what's coming out. So the primary screen that this release revolves around is the new account screen. So in version two of Service Autopilot, you've heard the terminology clients and leads. We have a new word in version three called accounts and accounts have statuses. The statuses can be clients, leads, former clients, canceled clients, etc. So again, like in the first release of version three, all of the screens that you'll see today have review pages as well as edit pages. So we are on the account review. And just to give you some highlights here, the most important information is at the top, such as an account overview, your account balance, the property information. If I scroll down, I see contact information, as well as my active jobs, billing info, installment plans, which we'll talk about here shortly. But really the most important thing on this page is this panel right here called activity. So we've merged a lot of functionality from version two into this one panel called activity. So things that you'll see here, visits that have been completed, payments that have been made, invoices that have been generated, something new called milestones, such as when the account was created, when certain jobs were sold, when estimates were won, things like that. Now I just created this client, so my activity panel isn't really filled out, but this will maintain the history of this account for the entire duration of them being a client with you. So we also added a search bar here as well that makes it super easy to search for things like dates, balances, invoice numbers, job names, things like that. Makes it really easy to navigate when you have years of history on an account. So I'm not going to go into every single feature on this page. Make sure to watch the training videos that are created for this release to get full details on everything that's possible on these screens. The next thing I want to show you is the job screen. So I'll click on jobs. Okay, so we are on the job review screen. In version two of Service Autopilot, there were actually two separate things that had the same names. And we jokingly called them jobs and job jobs. Maybe you've heard a trainer call them master jobs and jobs. Uh, maybe you've heard them called uh, visits before, maybe you've heard them called sub jobs. We wanted to correct this language in version three of Service Autopilot. And we have this thing called jobs, which is the record on the account that generates visits to the property. So what I mean by that is the items that you see on the dispatch board that in version two were called jobs, those are called visits in version three. So they're the actual individual occurrences of services on a property. And now the word job only represents the master level job, the thing that you scheduled on the account that generates a future schedule of visits, the new term in version three. So we're on the job review right now. 
And as you can see, I can see a job name, again, the property information, who the job is assigned to, as well as an upcoming schedule of visits for this job. We've also added some really cool things like your contact panel, the invoice preferences, etc. Everything is easily accessible from this review page for a job. Now, if I wanted to see an individual occurrence of this job or a visit, I could come down to the schedule and click on one of the cards. So if I click on this card, it opens up the visit review. So the visit review is the review page or the actual individual occurrence of this job or the visit. So here, this would be equivalent of clicking on a service on the dispatch board and making edits to things like the status or the rate or the assignment, etc. Again, I'm not gonna go through every single function on this page, make sure to watch the training videos, but that's what this screen represents. So let me go back and I'll show you here, this is a pattern that is kind of new in this iteration of version three, and that's the, the blue icons. This is just a quick way to navigate back to previous things, to quickly jump to important items related to the item that you're currently looking at. So I wanna go back to the account page, or excuse me, the account review for this account. So I'll click the icon here, and it just slides up the account review, just like that. Okay, the next thing that I wanna show you is installment plans. This is replacing functionality in version two that we called contracts. And they can function the exact same way that they did in version two, but we've added some new cool features. So let me click on this one that I have here and show you what we've done. Just to quickly explain the language change from contracts to installment plans, we felt like contracts was very specific to potentially the commercial side of the business, or even some people solely refer to contracts as the actual like written piece of paper that you give a client and they sign to agree to service. And in some cases, that is synonymous with installment plans. But for a lot of our members, they simply want to do flat monthly billing and their customer pay them for the whole year in installment plans. And so we felt like this name was more accurate to what the functionality actually provided. So as you can see here, I see a schedule of payments. I have an individual month, a line item for each month, as well as a rate. Now what's really cool about this, let me go ahead and edit my installment plan. Something that's new in version three is you can now have multiple line items per month. So what this provides you is more accurate accounting reporting to split up the revenue for an installment plan amongst different services. So in my account here, in my demo, I only have one service per month. But for your company, in January, in February, and maybe even March, you might also do, say, snow plowing and you still just receive one flat payment, or excuse me, you invoice one flat amount to your customer that includes both, you know, maybe snow plowing and salting, et cetera. During the summer months, it might include fertilization as well as mowing, as well as irrigation. And in version two, you had to dump all of that revenue into one bucket and name it something like monthly maintenance agreement. Now in version three, all you have to do is add a separate line item for the month that you wanna charge for and give it a different service. So let's say I know I'm gonna be doing aeration in March. I can select March here and add aeration and add a different amount for that service so that when they pay me the full amount for March, the revenue will be split correctly amongst the different services. It's really cool. This is something that we've been asked for for a long time. However, we are allowing you to convert your existing contracts into new installment plans. And what you will see when that conversion happens is something similar to this. 
you'll have a line item for every single month, just like you do in version two, and your service will be whatever you indicated in the service dropdown on your version two contract. So if you wanna take advantage of this new functionality, you'll really wanna go into your old contracts and modify them accordingly to get your revenue separating out the way that you've always wanted. So let me close down our installment plan here. And we'll go back to our account. And now I wanna show you the last thing that's in this iteration of version three. And it's something called the property review. So as you can see here, we have our account name, Chris Demo, and we have our property information. So I have a blue house icon next to the address. I'm gonna click that. And it pulls up a new screen called the property review. Now we're going to continue to iterate on this idea uh, namely, what we're going to allow you to do is copy property information from one account to another. And the big business use case for that is if you are residential, you might have a client at an address and then that client sells their house and you acquire the new tenants as a client. Well, in version two of Service Autopilot, you had a couple of options. You could either create a new account with the same property information and have to re-enter all of the property info, like your measurements and your custom fields, etc. Or you could just modify the name on the existing account to be the new tenants. And that really isn't a great solution either because now all of your historical information will have a new name on it that's not accurate to what the account info was at the time of doing the service or sending the invoice or receiving the payment or whatever. So we wanted to set up a world where you can just copy property information from one account to the next. This happens a lot in commercial situations where you have one billable person um, and then the property is sold and you keep the contract and you just need to copy all that property info over to the new tenant. So primarily what you see on this page are your property measurement info with smart maps. You have a property photo and this integrates with the team app. So when your crews take a photo on the team app, it will now save, excuse me, when they take a property photo on the team app, it will now save to your property review. And then we have something new called property data. Really all property data is, is custom fields that are specific to the property. And you'll notice when this is released that your, your custom fields that are connected to a rate matrix in version two of Service Autopilot, those are going to automatically convert to property data. So you'll still be able to access them, but they'll be on the property review screen now. And the reason that is, is we felt like it was safe to assume if you were using a custom field to do pricing, that it was related to some sort of property measurement or property data that is not specific to that client, but more to the property itself. So again, I'm not going to demo the new property measuring functionality here. There will be a training video and you can see exactly how that works. So those are the things that I have to show you today. Again, we have the new account review and edit. We have jobs and visits, both with their respective reviews and edits. We have installment plans, which were formerly called contracts. And we have a new page called the property screen with a review and an edit. And again, that property screen is just all the information related to the property itself that isn't necessarily connected to the owners of that property. So I hope that this has been helpful for you. Again, there's gonna be training information on all of these new functions in this iteration of, in this iteration of uh, version three of Service Autopilot. Definitely feel free to contact us if you have any questions about this, if you need training on this, but there will be tons of material released. Again, I hope that you're staying healthy in this crazy time of coronavirus. Um, I'm obviously recording this video from my home office and can't wait to get back into 
uh, Service Autopilot headquarters um, so that we could start bringing you this content from uh, our home office again. But thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any questions. Stay healthy, stay safe, have a good one. Hey, Joe here with the Service Autopilot training team. Wanted to let you know that our team has been hard at work producing content for this next uh, version three release. So we have a bunch of knowledge-based articles as well as seven new videos available to view. Those videos are gonna be on the serviceautopilot.com slash V3 webpage. There's a link there to that playlist. Also, as you're going through the new screens, if you do see something uh, that you need to do really quickly back in version two, you can always uh, use that link at the top of the screen to switch back if you need to get it done quickly. Also, if you have any questions, you can review those training materials or feel free to contact our support team via chat, email, or call. And thank you so much for being a Service Autopilot member. Hello. I want to thank you for all your support during this difficult time. The development team is hard at work on the new version and other improvements to Service Autopilot. We are so excited for you to start using the second release of version 3. Please, everyone stay safe. Thank you.